All right. Let's call things to order. Um, thanks uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Shaf Smith, and I am the town moderator for the town of Morseville. I want to welcome you to the public informational meeting tonight. We're here tonight to uh, educate and understand uh, on behalf of the community, the difference between a town administrator versus a town manager. A valid petition was received by the citizens of Morristown um, to have a vote on whether we will have a town administrator or a town manager um, in, in Morristown. Uh, the vote will be on August 29th, 2023, on whether we should move to the town manager form of governance. I'd like to introduce today um, guest panelists who will help us understand uh, the difference between a town manager and a town administrator uh, form of uh, government. Uh, seated to my uh, far right, uh, figuratively and literally, is uh, Charles Stafford, um, <laughs> Stowe town manager. Uh, uh, Bill, uh, we've known, or Charles and I have known each right. other for a while, so. Yeah. Um, uh, next is uh, Bill Sheplick, uh, who is the retired uh, Waterbury town manager and who I've also known for a long time. Um, and joining us versus uh, Zoom is Valerie Caples, who's the uh, Bristol town administrator. Um, so before we begin, I just want to go over some brief reminders. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Anyone wishing to speak in person must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle. And we'll do what we've done in the past, which is um, uh, have people in the, uh, he, who are here, who are present, um, speak first, and then we'll move to Zoom. Um, uh, participants on Zoom should click on the raise hand button if they wish to speak and mute their microphone when not speaking. Uh, I'd ask that all participants state their full name before addressing the uh, uh, the meeting. This is important. Um, all questions and remarks should pass through the town moderator. Um, one of the reasons that we do that is so that, you know, the conflict is more likely if you are talking at each other. And if you're talking through me, um, conflict may still exist, but it's less likely to break out into anything worse. So, um, I would ask that um, the topic for discussion be confined to the issue of town administrator versus town manager tonight. We do know that there will be an informational meeting on the third budget, um, and that will be, I think, on the 24th. So, um, so today we'll be confined to uh, the town administrator versus town manager. Um, as I said before, in-person participants will be allowed to speak first, then Zoom participants, um, and then all participants will be uh, allowed to ask questions. Um, so prior to the meeting, there were a number of questions that were developed sort of to spur that conversation on. Um, and those questions, uh, we'll, what we'll do is we'll have a question that will come uh, from the select board. Um, that uh, and the panelists have seen them, um, and it's sort of to help uh, spur on the discussion with regard to the difference between the town administrator and town manager. And then we'll intersperse um, questions from the audience. So we'll do uh, a question from the select board and then a question from the audience, and we'll go back and forth. Um, so. What was that? Okay. Yeah. And if the select board can um, introduce themselves when they speak, if everybody could do that, that would be really helpful so that we have a, a record um, and so that people know who's speaking. So, um, are there any questions before we begin? One question that will just help inform us a little bit. Does Morristown operate under the state general laws or do you have a charter? We do not have a charter. Okay. Great. Am you. I remembering that correctly? The village has charter, but the town does not. Okay. Yeah. 
Do you want us to introduce ourselves each time, or do you have uh, that there? Uh, I would, if you could. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. I think I think it's going to be helpful. Be sure. Yeah. By the end, that. people will know who you okay. are. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, why don't we start with the first prepared question? We're going to start with Laura and work our way across. Okay, yep. Laura? Uh, I'm going to ask, um, how do you think your experience as a town manager in your town has benefited your town's well-being and growth? Oh, I'd like to think I helped. Uh, you know, I have a great team of department heads, and uh, I think we've accomplished a lot. Uh, my former executive assistant, when I first arrived as a first town manager, said we accomplished more in the first 10 years than they did in the previous 40 years. And I think that's because we were able to structure and organize the team and, uh, and uh, take things one step at a time as appropriate. Um, so I think that's what managers are about. They're about communication and organization and helping the select board and the community achieve their goals. That was Charles Safford, by Oops. the way. <laughs> I'm Bill Shepelek from Waterbury. Um, I was the manager in Waterbury for almost 35 years. I went there in 1988, and Chris Palermo was on the board of selectmen uh, that hired me. And that's what they called themselves then, the board of selectmen, but uh, they're the select board now. Um, you know, Waterbury has changed tremendously in the, in the last 35 years, and I think that I helped play at least a small part in that. Um, Waterbury, like Morristown, had a uh, full-service village as well, and when I went there, we had just about two of everything, uh, a highway department, a street department, um, two fire departments, uh, two libraries, um, two zoning boards of adjustment. So I spent a lot of time in the first uh, five or 10 years there just trying to work towards consolidating that. Uh, I wish that we could have merged and just done it completely, but we, we were never able to do that because in my mind, because we had a police department and the wrong, the wrong entity, the wrong municipality owned the police department. It was the village police department and people outside of the village uh, were happy with the service that the village police department provided and they were happier that they didn't have to pay any taxes for it. So we were never able to merge, but we were able to consolidate all the other departments into one. And uh, by doing that, I think we generated efficiencies for the community. And then once we managed to do that, one of the things that I worked on very hard and it was something that Chris really was a champion of, uh, was to try to develop a capital improvement plan and budget where we would um, put together uh, a plan for purchasing equipment and other capital needs. It was mainly a, an equipment uh, for a uh, fire department and for um, highway department needs, but we had other other issues there, and in the village, we created one for water and sewer and, and for, for their uh, other capital needs. So with that, um, my goal was to try to help the select board uh, make a, a tax rate um, that was predictable, where you know we knew taxes would go up, but we didn't want to have big fluctuations up and down. And I think when the municipality can provide um, uh, something that the taxpayers and businesses can count on and it's stable, they can make their plans and, and help with uh, their own economic development. So I think that's uh, one of the things that I was able to do that I'm quite proud of. And uh, Valerie, do you have you want to add? You're on mute. Yeah, thank you. Uh, by the way, I'm not finding on the screen that I have available to me any kind of way to raise my hand, so I'll have to do it this way. Okay. And, uh, there's no chat function, so I can't do that. Uh, but I want to let you know that I need to hop off at 630 because I have a select board meeting tonight at 7, and I need to get ready for it. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, but one thing I'd like to add is that myself as a town administrator, um, 
and the particular background that I have brought to that position, I have been able to accomplish very similar things that they have uh, as town administrators. So it's not a, 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 a particularized um, uh, opportunity for town managers to have those kinds of successes and, and influences on growth and other positive impacts in the community. Okay. Thanks, Valerie. Question from the crowd. Yes. My name is Jan Paris. Uh, the question that I'd like to ask is what, as a town manager, have you been able to accomplish that if you were an administrator, you would not have been able to accomplish? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, you know, I think there's very successful town administrators and uh, I think managers and there's unsuccessful administrators and managers. A lot of it comes down to the person. Uh, I would say uh, if there is a difference, uh, there's uh, formal authority vested in the management. It's the general management principle to align authority with responsibility. Most power is informal, but when you need it, you need it, right? And uh, um, sometimes it's it helpful uh, to uh, get people back on the rails uh, because they understand you have certain authority um, and uh, to help this oversee the day-to-day -day administration and help the select board meet its policy objectives. So I don't want to go into things that I may have had discussions with various department heads over the years, uh, but I do think it, uh, it hasn't hurt. I think it's safe to say. And I think it's, uh, if I was going to, I've never been a town administrator, so I can't, I can't speak to that, but I can say I've been involved in municipal government for different Vermont municipalities and, uh, I, I, I do. I don't know if I'd walk into an arena where, uh, you know, I didn't have the statutory authority uh, to. Uh, um, I don't know if I want to put myself in that position. So sometimes I think you might get a broader pool of candidates potentially that uh, uh, would uh, respect uh, the roles that are outlined in the council manager forum government, and each each body and person is empowered to to advance. Uh, what in the end of the day is the policy objectives of the board. That's Charles Stafford again. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm Bill Shepluck. Um, so uh, I think Charles really hit the nail on the head. Uh, for me, I think that town administrators, frankly, have a very tough job. And I, I would never apply for a job to be a town administrator. Um, you know, I was trained, I have a master's degree in public administration, I concentrated in state and local finance, and being a municipal manager is, is a professional goal that I had. So I would not uh, apply for a job as an administrator. Uh, I think the reason why I think the administrator has the toughest job in any municipality where they exist is because and that's why I asked if you had, had a charter or you operate under general law. There are some towns that have town administrators, but they have a charter, and the charter lays out the authority that the administrator has. The town administrator is not recognized in state statute. You can't find anything in state statute about a town administrator. So the select board hires the administrator, and... Uh, I feel that oftentimes administrators get caught in a box where they have all the responsibility. The public expects them to be responsive, to do a job. The select board expects them to do a particular job, but they have no authority. They, they, the authority lies solely with the select board. Um, town manager form of government the manager makes the decisions on hiring, on discipline, promotion, and firing. The select board doesn't play a part in, in that process. And I think for the employees, it's always easier because I come from a, a municipality where, <clears throat> you know, I, I served, what, four, five, I, the select board hired me, the, the village trustees hired me, the water sewer commissioners hired me, the library commissioners hired me, and, and the cemetery commissioners in the end, I ended up working for them. So five different boards. It's, it's hard to have more than one boss. And if you're the highway foreman and you're doing your job the way that 
you think you should do it, and you work for a, a town administrator, the town administrator might have some input in your day-to-day -day operations, but if the administrator isn't getting the performance that he or she wants, you got to turn to the select board, and the select board, there's five of them. So which one of the select board is the boss of the highway foreman? So that's where I think the big difference is, and I think it can be very challenging. There are people who are very capable. Valerie's have a, had a good run in Bristol. Uh, she was also the administrator in uh, Waitsfield, I believe, and I'm not sure she enjoyed that job as much as she enjoys the one she's in. So <laughs> it, it depends upon uh, a lot of different factors, but that to me is the big difference. And Valerie, we're not going to make you answer the question of which job you enjoyed more, but <laughs> maybe you could speak to uh, the, uh, the uh, town administrator versus town manager issue. Yes, it's a very interesting question. And uh, for, um, obviously not with Wastefield anymore. And one of the reasons for that is because the select board at the time, uh, it was not a good relationship. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and both Charles and Bill make really good points. Um, I personally prefer being a town administrator uh, in large part because of, of the personnel part of it, it does not appeal to me. I'm not well suited for that kind of personnel, that depth of personnel management. I prefer to be able to punt stuff like that to the select board. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, uh, as a town administrator, I, I feel that the department heads and I are, are more on a collegial level, colleagues, and so it's, it's, um, I try to work with them on, in that way, and I don't know if that's very different with a town manager. Uh, so I, I try to be supportive in that way, knowing that I don't have authority to, 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 to uh, yield a heavier hand. Um, and also, uh, Bristol might be a bit unique, I'm not sure. Uh, as, as Bill pointed out, there is no statutory framework to define a town administrator's role. It's really up to the select board. And in Bristol's case, they made it very clear when they selected me that they expect me to operate like a town manager, except when they want to be involved in something like personnel stuff. Uh, they, they expect me to handle a lot of the day-to-day -day things. And sometimes I, I question whether I have the authority to do it, but I remember what, the, what their policy direction was. And so I will often make executive decisions and then let them know after the fact that I did it. Uh, and, and so far that seems to have worked really well. One of the disadvantages of the town administrator uh, operation is, um, uh, sometimes it takes things take longer because you have to check in with the select board. I can't just make there are some things I, I have to wait and get their input on at, a, at a, an open meeting. So it, sometimes that in terms of scheduling and getting certain things done within a timeline, that can be a complication. Great. Thanks. Judy, <clears throat> Judy you have the next question. Thank you. Um, what do you see as the main difference between a town and oh, oh we already did that one. Um, What issues with uh, transition from having a town administrator to a town manager should the town of Morristown expect to have to consider? Yeah, before I answer, I just, I just want to make clear that, you know, Bill and I and Valerie, we're not necessarily here to advocate for anything. It's up to right. your community to make whatever value decisions and how you want to govern yourself. So I don't want our comments to be perceived. They're meant to be informative and responsive, uh, not to uh, lead or to try to, to direct in any manner. Um, in terms of... Uh, uh, transition. I when I was the first town manager in Stowe, I've been there for 16 years. Before that, there was a town administrator, and uh, I think there was a certain carryover. Uh, department heads were used to politicking the uh, select board and uh, trying to corner them one on one, and uh, you know, and I think that's one of the reasons they want the select board wanted to move, uh, so they weren't focusing on personnel matter, which they may or may not have experience with or to be bogged down with that. They wanted to focus on borrow policy and the direction of the community. And I remember one department head in particular showed up a meeting, thought he was going to get into a personnel matter. And the select board redirected him back to the manager and said, we have a manager now. You need to redirect through him. And uh, 
And so, and I think once the select board backed the manager uh, in that regard, then it was, you know, smooth sailing for the most part. You know, <laughs> democracy always has its bumps in the road. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that's another example of a good principle. The manager is going to be as good as the, uh, the select board uh, that's elected and vice versa. And so it is definitely a team between the select board and the manager and, uh, you, uh, you know, for what that's worth. Uh, so there was a case where it was important for the select board to affirm uh, the roles of the different bodies. That's not to say that if that department head had a legitimate grievance, he could have aggrieved to the select board, and they would have been the personnel board in a quasi-judicial manner to wait, adjudicate whether that uh, grievance to uphold the manager or decide with the employee. And so in the end of the day, that legislative body is all in control and has oversight. Um, you know, ultimately the voters do because you elect your representatives and you adopt the budget, so to speak, at the 500,000 foot level, the select board's at the 200,000 foot level, the manager at the 50,000 level, you have department heads at 10,000 foot feet, and then you got the all important road crew where the rubber meets the road. And we all have our roles, and Plato said justice is fulfilling your roles, right? And it's a dance. When we dance well together, things move forward. If we don't, things not so much. If that helps. Uh, Bill Shepwick. Um, <laughs> you'll get it before you're done. Um, I, I, I served as a municipal manager in two municipalities, and I was not the first manager in either one. Uh, Waterbury had uh, uh, moved to the town manager form of government back in the 1960s, and I went there in 1988. I think, I think the biggest difficulty is and the biggest challenge is for employees, because as Charles said, if, if you have employees uh, that have the select board as their supervisor, and I know Morristown has had an administrator, and I don't know how much leeway the select board gave to the administrator, but the ultimate authority lay, lay with the select board in terms of hiring and firing. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna go on long, because Charles really hit, hit this pretty well. I would encourage you all to read the, the statute uh, before you vote. It's in Title 24, Chapter 37, about town managers. And it, it's pretty clear. It says, the town manager shall perform and now has conferred upon him or her all of the duties that are, were previously conferred upon the select board, except for a very few things. You can't lay out highways. Uh, you're not a member of the Board of Civil Authorities. You can't uh, sign orders on the general fund. The select board still has to sign those orders. But uh, all, the, all the other authority that the select board has by state statute is conferred upon the town manager, um, general purchasing agent of the town, all the supervision of all the buildings and the, and the property that the town owns, uh, road commissioners, if you have one of those, this, the town manager will end up being in charge of that person, uh, do, does all the accounting, supervises all the appropriations. You know, as Charles said, the budget is important. Once the budget's adopted, this, the, the manager is the person responsible for executing that budget. Um, and there are some times that the manager says, well, you know, uh, we were uh, supposed to buy this or that for $30,000, but we had a flood. We're not going to buy anything for a while. And you tell that to the, the department heads. And at the next select board meeting, you, you report that to the select board. But um, I think the biggest challenge is when you come to hire key positions. The, the law is clear. The manager has the authority to hire all employees fire chief, police chief, all police officers, all highway crew members, library, everything. Um, <clears throat> managers, if they're good, aren't foolish. And oftentimes a manager will say, we're going to hire a police chief, so let's put a, a search committee together. And you include a couple select board members, and you include a couple of other town employees, and you include some members of the public, and you do that search. You don't have to do any of this. There are managers who just you know, send the advertisement out, they get the resumes, 
and they make a decision. But when it's a, a high profile position, I think you want buy-in from the community. So the, the, the manager will be the ultimate authority. And I often told the boards in the past, you know, if we can't reach consensus, then I'll hire my choice because I have the responsibility and the authority to do that. But you try in those whole high profile positions often, at least I always did, to, to use the, the select board and the general public as a resource. I don't know if you do the same thing or not, but. You know, I, uh, you know everyone has their own style. I would say that I, and I'll get to Bauer, I, I wanted to say a couple things to add on to him, if that's okay, Bauer, we can uh, chat. Um, I tend to treat all my select board members equally, so I don't necessarily involve one in something and, and not the others. Uh, with that being said, Here's an example where if you had a municipal charter, our charter says the manager, recognize the manager has a right to hire, fire, and perform corrective action. Uh, but with the hiring of a department head, he has to provide seven days advance notice to the select board, and the select board has the right to veto that. And then I have to submit another person. So if I'm looking to hire my third cousin on my mother's side, or there's something they're aware of that I'm not, you know, it's a check-in. And the other thing I would uh, say is it's important to remember not to freak people out when you see all this statutory authority. Um, again, it's as good as the support of your board, and it's effectively so the manager has operational control, right? So they're, they, ha they can do what they need to do on behalf of the municipality day in and day out, subject to the oversight and policy direction of the legislative body. So that's all it's important to remember. So you folks adopt personnel policies, purchasing policies, and other policies that provide direction to the manager. And it's the manager's responsibility to adhere to that. And other than being part of the right to chap, which is in a high bar, no, I'm just kidding, is, uh, is man the other important principle of a manager to remember is they're apolitical. Uh, one of the biggest compliments I ever received from the chair of our board was that uh, uh, that she didn't know my political stripes. She didn't know if I was Republican, Democrat, Progressive, Libertarian. Uh, I have to, we have to be able to serve whatever masters. So we're not here to advance candidates or wade into political waters. Um, we're here to uh, um, advise, you know, based on our education and experience, and to implement the policies as adopted in public session by the board. Valerie, do you have anything to add? Uh, those are very good comments. Uh, I just want to mention that the uh, ICMA, International City Managers Association, has a code of ethics. It applies to city managers, but as myself as a professional, I have chosen to abide by those code, that code of ethics as well, which emphasizes it, uh, being apolitical. I don't even, I, I cannot sign petitions of any kind. Uh, I cannot donate money to political organizations because my name might show up somewhere. So I have to, I walk a very, very fine line um, in terms of being apolitical. Um, and I, a little fun fact, well, two little fun facts. Uh, you may or may not know that um, Bill Shepelock actually hired me back in 1989 as Waterbury's first town planner. And that was the, that was the start of my trajectory into municipal adventures. <clears throat> um, and the other fun fact is that uh, Bristol has, had a town manager form of government, and then, then a town administrator form of government, then a town ma manager form of government again. And then they, they decided that they really didn't like the way the town manager, they didn't like the town manager having all that authority. <laughs> so they, they, they did what they needed to do to eliminate that position. I th think it might've been by a town vote. It was before my time. And, uh, and I don't remember all the particulars about what led up to it, but uh, they um, went back to a town administrator. <laughs> yeah, it's a good fit for a lot of communities. The other thing, if I could just jump in before I have to hop off soon, um, um, part of my background, and, and this probably wouldn't be true of other candidates, uh, as a former professional planner, I have a lot of experience with infrastructure projects, grant writing, grant management, project management. And so that has been a strength that I've been able to bring to both town administrator positions in terms of community development. I've been very, very active in community development types of activities that have benefited both communities. And I don't know to what degree a town manager would have the capacity 
to do stuff like that, uh, other than delegating to other other members of the staff to to you know be responsible for certain things. But it, so that's that stands out to me as a as a difference, at least in my situation. Thanks, Valerie. Questions from the crowd? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bob Wartree. I live here in Morrisville. And my question is, if the town of Morris, Bill Morris Town, decides to go with the town manager, what would we be looking for in terms of education, characteristics? I mean, you can hire someone who just doesn't work out. What are the key points that we as a town should be looking for, um, in your opinion, yeah. that would help us if we decide to go this road to help us make a decision that we won't regret? Well, I'll, I'm Bill Shuplock. I'll take this one first. And I, I think that there's no pat answer for that. Um, as I said a, a few minutes ago, um, you know, I went to uh, graduate school, got a master's degree in public administration. This was my choice for a career. Uh, I think Charles is in a, in, in a similar boat. Uh, Valerie went to school to be a, a planner, and now she's in an administrative role that's, uh, that her background you know, has given her uh, really good uh, uh, education and experience to do the job that she's doing now. I would encourage you to stay away from hiring, um, if you're going to hire a manager or maybe even an administrator, um, you know, back in the day, uh, back, as, you know, um, a lot of municipal managers came up. They were civil engineers. Uh, they had uh, lots of experience with infrastructure, highways, uh, water and sewer. And certainly those are things that are important for municipal managers to understand. But you can hire consulting engineers to get that kind of expertise. I think in the 21st century, you're, you're going to look for somebody who has strong analytical skills, strong financial skills, uh, somebody who has uh, at least some education in personnel management. Um, you know, there's plenty of people who have great credentials and they do terrible jobs and you know that I think that is the case across all professions you know you could graduate summa cum laude from um, you know the Harvard School of uh, Kennedy School of Government at, at uh, Harvard and be an awful town manager or a city manager um, so I think that there's an X factor and you're going to rely on your select board or whomever it is that's on the search committee to try to determine that. But I think you should aim for somebody who has good education in the things that really are um, a little bit unique. So I would encourage that for you. Charles. I'm Charles. Uh, I think... Uh, it is has to be a good fit between the board and the manager and that manager has to be adaptable enough to transition as the boards change while maintaining their professional code of ethics and the international city managers association has a very strong code of ethics they will disbar people if they do not hear or adhere to them and so that's one of the strengths of, of folks that are um, career municipal managers uh, so to speak is they are guided by those principles and i do think you know, in smaller towns, you, you might get someone with a bachelor's degree or a related field. As a town becomes bigger and you're going to make a career of it, you tend to pursue your master's in public administration. I think Morristown has a lot going on. You're a pretty big operation. You're important to the county. And you've come a long ways in recent years. Um, so you might start thinking about something like that, at least preferred. But education in the person and their disposition is really important. You need someone you can trust and someone that's reasonably personable um, and uh, can empathize with others and be fair and objective. In the end of the day, 
um, one of the hardest things is to say no to people, right? Or if we're going to go, if we're going to, if we're going to go to the select board, then we need to amend this policy not just for you, for you but for everybody, right? Because we're in the fair and equal business, and uh, so uh, you need to be uh, personable, but not necessarily a backslapper, uh, you know, or someone that's just looking to. Uh, make a lot of friends. I mean, because uh, it can be challenging at times to uh, to be in that position, and so you better have uh, some good hobbies, a good uh, outlet and network of family and friends that uh, aren't dependent on uh, being, uh, you know, uh, uh, liked every day by everybody. <laughs> one one quick story before we let Valerie go on. Yeah, I, I grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts as a city of uh, 160,000 people when I lived there. I went to the University of Massachusetts, uh, you know, 25,000 students. Then I went to Syracuse University, which was, again, a, a school of about 20,000 in a city of over 200,000. And when I, uh, the first job that I got, I, I was appointed as the town manager in the town of Brighton, Vermont, Island Pond. Uh, 1,500 people, and that included the, the church group that used to be there. There were about, about 1,000 people there. And when I went in, uh, I went in to interview with the select board. I was dressed in my three-piece suit, and I walked in, and the chairperson of the select board was sitting with his hands behind his head and his feet up, and he had a, you know, kind of a, a lined flannel shirt on and a, and a hat. And I said to myself, well, I don't think I'm getting this job. <laughs> but I had, a, I had a good interview, and what I was 23 years old. I was right out of school. I had been a movie usher and an assistant manager in a movie theater before that. <clears throat> and they started talking to me about roads and culverts and graders. And I told them, I said, well, I really don't even know what a culvert is, but if that's important to you, I'll learn what it is and I'll figure it out. And I said, the only promise that I will make to you is that I won't ever lie to you. And I think that's why I got the job. That was the critical statement that I made and, and I was hired. And then to the point about um, the International City Management Association, I don't know if Chris remembers this, but, uh, I interviewed in, in Waterbury, and uh, we negotiated. I wanted the job, um, and I, we came to agreement on the salary and, and uh, all kinds of other things, vacation, health insurance. But I told them I, I wanted the town to pay my dues for the Vermont Town and City Management Association and the International City Management Association, and I wanted to go to the annual conferences of those organizations. And the chairperson of the select board called me up and said, well, we'd like to offer you the job. And he went through and he said, we'll give you everything that you asked for, except we're not going to pay for your International City Management Association, and we're not going to pay for you to go to the annual conference there. And I said, well, I'll think it over. And I got back to him on Monday. That was a Friday. And I called him back and I said, I'm not going to take the job. And he was stunned. And he said, well, why? And I said, well, um, he said, we gave you everything you wanted. I said, you gave me everything that, I, that we negotiated, but I'm a professional. This is my chosen profession. And if you don't choose to invest in me for my personal, personal and professional development to pay for the International City Management Association and to go to their conferences, I'm not interested in, in the job because you're not interested in a professional manager, in my opinion. And, um, you know, he thanked me. And a few days later, one of the other board members from the village called me and we discussed it. And then I went back and I talked to the boards again. And they ultimately paid for that. And, you know, people have an impression that people go to professional conferences and they just go there to, to drink and have a good time. And, uh, you know, you go there for, there's social things that you do at the conferences. But, um, at least in our experience, we go to conferences and we learn a lot and we bring that stuff home and we implement it in our communities and it's, it's important. Valerie? I wholeheartedly agree with Bill about the value of professional development. I've never 
Uh, I've never subscribed to the ICMA because it's been out of the budget reach of the places where I've been, but uh, uh, I still follow the, the 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 information they offer, and and I I I don't attend. I haven't attended conferences in quite a long time. Largely, just I haven't had the time. <laughs> it's been too too busy. Um, but I do, I do uh, echo the real value in investing in the professional development of whoever gets hired. Um, Don? Thank you. <clears throat> Don McDowell, Morristown Select Board. So perhaps a, a little twist on a question. If a town, town like Morristown, were to adopt a town manager form of government, what, what are they, they going to lose? What's 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 the downside? What's either for us as a select board or for the townspeople? What might be missing afterwards that would be important? We better let Valerie answer first. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Valerie, you have any thoughts there? It depends on what you've got, I guess. Uh, I don't know how you how satisfied you are or are not with the current situation. And so the select board would be forfeiting a lot of its authority. And uh, that might be a welcome thing, or uh, it might, you know, it might free the select board up to handle other higher priority situations rather than uh, a lot of mundane things. Um, um, it, just a, a little side note, I have gotten approached by a few people in, in Bristol uh, advocating that, that they would like to see Bristol go back to a town manager position, uh, form of government. They'd like to see me as appointed as a town manager because they they want the select board to be freed up from a lot of the those those details. But I personally would not choose to become a town manager for for the reasons I said before. The the Bill Shepelek, the the quick answer is that. I think that select board could lose a lot of headaches. Um, you know, the day-to-day -day operations, uh, you don't have to concern yourself with as much. Um, you know, the community, um, every community is different. And I would like to think that, uh, you know, um, the, the town manager is responsible to the hiring authority, the select board, or the city council in a city. Um, and the, the public doesn't have any direct uh, uh, ties to the, to the manager. You elect the select board, and that's really where you should go. But any good town manager is going to have an open, do open door policy to the, to the public. You're going to welcome the public to come in. And certainly if there are issues that um, you know, a member of the public has, especially with, a, with an employee, you know, that's something that the manager is going to have to deal with. But I think having a manager uh, and using Valerie's words, the select board forfeiting some authority and some responsibility that you have, I think it frees up the select board to concentrate on where the community wants to go. The town manager, a good town manager, is not out leading the parade, saying this is the direction we're going. This is what we're going to do. The select board is supposed to do that. They're supposed to get input from the voters, and they're supposed to make decisions about what we want our community to be. Do you want expanded recreation programs? Do you want a better library? Do you need better streets and sidewalks? Those aren't the issues for the town manager to to prioritize. Now, if there's a discussion, obviously the select board will ask the manager's input on these things. But the select board should be making the decisions about where the community wants to go. And then the, the select board should ask the manager, OK, what resources do we need to get there? And the manager is going to talk to you about what kind of financial resources that you're going to need. Can we get it through grants? Can we get it through, um, uh, do we have to get it through taxes? Um, what kind of uh, human resources do we need? Do we need to hire more people? You know, in, in Waterbury, uh, in the last 10 years of my career there, 
um, you know, they started asking for more and more recreation programs. We had a, a, a swimming pool. We had a small summer recreation program that ran for eight weeks, and, and we, we ran it all with part-time employees. And uh, there was one year that, you know, they, they asked, the select board asked for a part-time recreation director uh, to be a year-round person, but on a part-time basis. And, and we did that. We hired that person. And a few years went by, and uh, you know the select board was telling me, well, we need to keep the tax rate here. We need to do these other things. So I presented a budget, and I know that's one of the questions. I presented a budget, and I had increased the rec director's time from 24 hours to maybe 28 hours or something like that. And we went to town meeting, and for the first time in my life, you know, the Somebody got up and made an amendment to the budget to put more money in the budget to make the recreation director a full-time employee. We want a recreation director for 40 hours a week. It passed town meeting, so we did that. So the manager shouldn't be the one that's leading the direction, where do we go? The public and the select board make those decisions. The manager then implements those decisions and comes up with the resources and a game plan to get you to where you want to be. Yeah, I'm Charles. Uh, I think those are all uh, appropriate. I, I remember the last time I came here to talk about the council manager of former government, I don't know how many years ago. I think Judy was on the board back then. And the board said, why would we want to give up that kind of power, quote unquote. And I, you, you have to decide that. I don't know how much fun that power is. You know, uh, you know, not to say you have an easy job, you know, even with a manager, but generally Bill's right. You just, you just, you uh, have to decide the what and the manager management typically look, concentrates on the how, right? What's it going to take to implement that? What do we need to devise and understand uh, from a resource standpoint and gets about making it happen. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, my public works director said to me the other day, are you pushing this? And I said, I'm not pushing anything. The only thing I'm hoping for in life is my wife's there for my 50th wedding anniversary <laughs> someday. Uh, you know, and, and I, but I also look at it as a fairness question. Um, you know, I'm not in the opinions business as I'm fond of telling Tommy Gardner, but I would say when I reflect back, I think I live in Elmore. Would I want to get on the Elmore select board when I retire? And, uh, you know, it's an interesting question. You know, it's a small town there, and, and maybe, but it's challenging under whether you have a manager or not. I often think about larger communities, and I think whether it's an administrator or a manager, you owe it to have some investment in some central administration to carry a lot of that day-to-day -day load. Um, that's a lot to ask of an elected official. I mean, you're coming to the table because you've got tentacles in the community, you're well-respected, you have the community at heart, and you know its direction and values, that overall vision of what you want to achieve and, uh, and that sort of thing. You're not necessarily a personnel manager or know about debits and credits. Maybe it's a bonus if you do. But even if you are, maybe you've got a side business or own a business or you work for someplace 50 to 60 hours a week. Do you really want to be putting that kind of time in that what it takes to administer a municipal corporation? and oftentimes multi-million dollar municipal corporations with a large employment base. And so and to me, you owe it to a board if you want people to continue to serve and step forward <clears throat> to give them the tools and resources they need to effectively carry out their vision for the municipality. And even on the best day, that's not an easy job. Questions here? I know we have a couple on the uh, uh, on Zoom. Questions here? Mary Lou. Hi. Hi. Hi, thank you. Uh, thank you for your wonderful presentation. Uh, you're talking about uh, master's programs and um, from the people that are there now, I can tell that you folks have come from old school and yourself have had to transition to, um, you know, everything electronic and uh, be exposed now more to the concept of transparency. Um, I guess my question is about, and when you go to continuing education now and you're in these conferences, what is the instruction 
or what is the buzz for municipal employees, select board employees, town employees, dealing with miscommunic mis miscommunication, social media, the fastness of the spread of information and the mucker muckering around that can happen. Um, do you have any advice for a small town like ours with the expectation of a town manager's philosophy on it, 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 it's social just, media? Yeah, well, it's a I, challenge. I, I, yeah. You, okay. yeah. Charles, you, I'm Charles, Charles speaking. Yeah, I'm Charles. <laughs> and uh, it's a challenge. I was reading a study the other day that people have a very short attention span nowadays and they just want to hit like like they do on Facebook and why didn't it happen? Why didn't my world become perfect? And, you know, democracy takes work, it belongs to the diligent, and it, it, uh, it's a deliberative process. It's not meant to go fast. I mean, we have three branches of government. We have a bicameral legislature, right? It's meant to understand each other's perspectives, right? And that all takes time. Uh, and I think, uh, um, I think the way I try to work with it is I try to, my time to speak is when I work with the staff and develop an agenda summary that provides the macro context so that the select board can make informed decisions, the fiscal impact, how it relates to the town plan, and ultimately a recommendation as may be appropriate. So I try to give context and act and uh, help the board act in an informed and deliberative manner. And uh, so there's a lot of buzz out there. I don't entirely ignore it, but I, I read front page forum every morning to see if the, uh, you know, they're, they're going to burn down the fort. But, uh, <laughs> you know, generally, generally, uh, you know, uh, I try to do my job and hope my wife gives me a hug when I come through the door at night. So, I mean, I think at some point you need to, that's more their job to listen to that and my job to make sure they have the information they need to to counter the passion that may be before him at the moment. Um, but, yeah. Bill, I know that Valerie has a hard, hard stop. So uh, Valerie, I'd be sure. curious if you have any thoughts on that. Uh, not specifically. Sometimes some organizations have a, a communications person who monitors that that kind of stuff and that uh, is responsible for uh, for maintaining a, a, a single or a, the direct message to go out to the public. Uh, Bristol does not have that. Um, and there are times when, when we've seen uh, misinformation posted on front porch forum and other places. And sometimes we choose to uh, correct it, sometimes not, because because the stuff just moves so quickly and people's attention spans are so short that it, it'll be forgotten by tomorrow, perhaps. Uh, and then we'll deal with, if, if, it, if it continues to live on, then we'll deal with it in another way. But um, I don't have much else to add to that. Yeah, I, I think this is really just a general question about government in general, whether you're uh, you know, a, a town of a thousand people and, and you just have a select board or you're a uh, big city and you've got a city manager, um, you know, social media, uh, the, the demands by the public uh, are, are much, much greater now than they've ever been before. And I, I don't think it really has anything to do with whether you have a manager or administrator. Um, you should have a policy. Uh, Charles talked about policies. The select board should establish a, a policy, social media policy. Some communities say their policy is we're not going to have a social media presence and they stay off completely. Uh, it's tough now being a select board member or anybody in government. The public has a very high expectation for um, it, it's up to me. You know, you, you need to respond to me right now. And, uh, you know, um, the boards that I worked for a few years ago asked me to keep kind of a, a log in terms of how I spent my time. And it was incredible the amount of time that you spend just on emails. You know, you go in in the morning, it's usually the first thing you do, and you got 25 or 30, and you've got to read them. And then, you know, I usually would put it away until noontime and then look <clears throat> again and then look at the end of the day. Uh, it it sucks up huge amounts of time, and it's a, it's a challenge. And uh, you know, unfortunately, we live in a time now where 
everybody has a, an opinion and opinions are oftentimes diametrically opposed and we're modeled or we, we have modeling from other uh, parts of our government and other places that, well, if you disagree with me, you know, you have to hate me too. And that, that's tough. But that's nothing to do with manager or administrator. That's just life in these United States. Chris, do you have a question? Sure. Um, in uh, developing budgets, um, which is a town manager um, rule, uh, a, a significant rule, um, do you engage the select board early on in the process, or do you propose a finished product to be considered by the board and ultimately by the public? Yeah, Bill Shepelek. Um, so I think you get different answers from, from different people on this one. Uh, what I always tried to do, and as I, I said a little while ago, you know, I, I had a town and a village and a water system and library and cemetery, and they all had their budgets that those boards had to uh, had to approve before we went to annual meeting. Um, you know, I would try to start working with my department heads. In Waterbury, we're on a calendar year budget started January 1st. Uh, we didn't have town meeting until uh, the first Tuesday in March, and you know, we didn't have a good budget until 30 days after that. So I would start in, in the fall with department heads and kind of try to just get their lay of the land, what things they needed. And then I would talk to the select board and ask them, you know, what are your priorities? Is your priority to have a tax rate that doesn't go up, a tax rate that goes up by a particular amount of inflation? Or, or do you have uh, things that you want to get done? Do you have particular programs that you absolutely want to have uh, funded? And I would take all that and kind of put it into the mix. And what I would do, because I had so many boards to meet with, uh, and we had a pretty extensive budget. We had general fund that had several departments in it, planning, fire, um, uh, you know, general government. Uh, then we had the highway fund, we had the library fund. So what I would do is I would work and I would come to meetings mostly, we had a meeting every week in January and I worked every day in January. And I would just present the board the budgets of those individual departments. I'd have department heads come in, sit with me and the select board, they would review the needs. And the message always back to the department heads was, you know, just because the select board approved your budget tonight doesn't mean that your budget's approved. It means they understand what you're looking for, they understand what your needs are, and now the fire department, we've looked at that, it's done. But next week we're gonna look at the highway department and the library, and the week after that we're gonna look at recreation. So I would get the select board's input on individual budgets find out whether or not they wanted to add or, or subtract. And then I would meld it all together and come back and in the last two weeks of the process would say, okay, here's what you approved, you know, one at a time, and this is what it looks like as the whole. And if it was good, then we didn't have to have a meeting the last week in January. We'd just go forward and put it in the town report. If the budget was too high or the tax rate was too high, would have to come back. And at that point, I would work with the select board. And I always ask the board, I said, unless there's something specific that you don't want to do, uh, you know, we're not going to do the sidewalk on Winooski Street, OK. But if, if we've just got to get $50,000 out of the budget, I would plead with the select board, please let me and my department heads figure out where to get the $50,000 instead of you telling us. because. Uh, it was easier to deal with it that way, and we could take a little bit here and a little bit there. Uh, so that's how I did my process. Uh, so I, I look at, uh, Charles, uh, I look at budgeting as a year-round process, right? Every time the select board meets, it's informative. Every time, all year long, we're getting a sense for where the community is and where it wants to go, right? 
and uh, and I say that to the Miami department heads as well. You know, budgeting isn't a one-time year a year thing. It's it's a throughout the year type of thing. You know, sometimes I've had boards say, well, we want a two percent increase, and that's it. Hey, and if that's what you want, in the end of the day, I give that budget to you, and that's your budget to deliver to the voters. And so we need to respect that. I have not uh, looked for that level of specificity like Bill, um, because generally I have a sense of where the board's at, and I always, always reserve the right. I'm not there just to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to know. My job is to talk about some uncomfortable truths. Inflation's at 7%. We've had a 21% population increase in the last decade. Holding the current number of employees doesn't protect your current level of services. It's a diminishment in services. It's going to take more people in order to achieve the same objectives as it did five to 10 years ago. And so a manager um, you know, has, to, has to reserve that ability because we have to advise you of the fiscal affairs of the community and what it takes to achieve those objectives. I remember someone tell me once, well, I only want to pay $1 million for the arena. That's what I'm willing to spend. Well, that's fine, but you're not going to get an indoor refrigerated arena. And, you know, it's the same as me saying I, I want to only pay 15000 for an F-150. Well, that's fine, but that's not what they cost, right? And I'm sure you all, right? So I, I think I'll, I'll end there, but I think that's, that's an important principle. It's important for you to give them a reasonable feel, but not lock that in and not allow to hear what you need may need to know. Valerie? I can, I can just quickly jump in and the, the process that I follow with Bristol and what I did follow in Waitsfield, very similar to what Bill does in terms of meeting with the department heads, uh, coming up with preliminary budgets and having the and meeting with the select board independently or individually and have them review the uh, departmental presentations and have conversations and then put it all together and see what it looks like. And then in, in my case, the select board did get kind of overly involved sometimes in the, the nuts and bolts and nitpicking about uh, and getting hung up over a $30 item right, and the completely uh, overlooking a $200,000 uh, subject. So you never know how that's going to go. But uh I, I appreciate, I have, do have to hop off. I appreciate the opportunity to participate in your panel and I, I'm sure you'll make the, the best decision for your community and I wish, it's good to, to see Charles and Bill uh, and I wish everybody very well. I have to sign off. Thank you too, Valerie. Thank you, Valerie. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Kathy. Uh, yes, my question is, um, does the panel feel that a town manager has, the town manager would provide more consistency? Um, and as we've seen, we've had board members change and everybody's opinion is different. So if it stays like a town administrator, um, things change more rapidly, rapidly where I, I would feel that a town manager would offer us more consistency in the town. Well, I, I think it all all depends on on who you get for the manager and what happens with the board. As Charles said about a half an hour ago, uh, you know, if if you have a, a wholesale change on the board, you know, you have five board members and you put to put together a budget and you go to town meeting, and in Waterbury, you know, three of those five were up for election every year. And if three people changed, you might have a very different board and the consistency or the, the game plan that you developed uh, might change. Now, if the budget passes by the, uh, by the community, uh, and that's the case, my uh, statement to the board would be, look, the, the former select board put this together, the public approved it, we're gonna execute this budget as it was built. <laughs> And, and then you deal with the political uh, differences that come up, but that's what the public has told you they want to do. If the, if the budget gets defeated at town meeting and there's a wholesale change on the board, uh, which I think you're familiar with, um, you know, then you got to come up with a, with a new budget and, and go a, a different direction. But consistency, uh, a professional town manager, one who 
takes his or her position seriously, and especially one who uh, abides by the tenets of ICMA, you know, they're going to commit to be in the job for at least three years. And um, maybe the tenant is two years still, but uh, I really feel that, you know, if I if I was going to take a job as a as a municipal manager somewhere, you know, my commitment would, would be I'm going to be there at least three years. And that and when I went to Island Pond and was hired in 19. 19- 82, I, I told them, you know, this isn't going to be a stepping stone for me. This is a job that I want. I'm going to give you what I can. And I stayed there for almost six years. And uh, I felt that I had done about everything that I could do in that community from a professional standpoint. And it was time to move on. And, you know, not many managers stay in a community 35 years like I did in, in Waterbury. It's a, it's a tough challenge. And there's changes in the board all the time. But uh, consistency, I don't think you can just pin that hope on the manager or an administrator. Consistency is going to depend upon a whole lot of different factors than just one person. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, staying power depends on civility. I think it's important that people remain civil to each other and respectfully disagree. Uh, is how long someone's going to stick around is to some degree how they're treated, right? Not that people can't reasonably disagree. Um, I think Bill's right. Our ICM Code of Ethics is you have to commit to at least two years, short of someone looking to rescind the form of government or burning down your house. Uh, you know, otherwise you could be uh, uh, disbarred again from the uh, professional affiliation with the association. And so they take that very seriously. You step to that door, you have a commitment uh, to try to see it through and help the community. For me personally, it depends on the acceptance of the board of me. And, uh, and it depends on my wife, whether she likes the area or not. And, uh, and also, and I've come to realize in my career, if you'll notice, there's a half hour circle around where her mother lives. And uh, that was where I was able to grow my professional uh, development, is, uh, as long as I stayed reasonably proximate to Williston, Vermont. <laughs> Are there any other questions from the, uh, from the crowd? Is there, are there any other questions from the board? I think, so uh, this has been fantastic, very, very uh, informative. And I want to thank uh, Charles, Bill, and Valerie, who just left, um, for um, giving us a, a really great view of, of what the different options that we have are. And uh, again, the vote is the 29th. Um, and uh, we will also have an information <clears throat> meeting on the budget. It's on the 24th. Yes. So uh, stay tuned. I don't know whether the, you have a moderator or not for that. <laughs> <laughs> I've, done t- I've done two. I'm not sure whether that's good luck for you guys. So. <laughs> Can I just say um, we'd like to thank uh, Shep for uh, moderating and yes. attending this. And we'd like to thank Judy for setting this yep. up and organizing the uh, speakers for us. Sure. And thank you, gentlemen, for coming. It's been Thanks uh, for having us, great. and good luck to you. Thank you.